Let's take it right back to the board here. So recap four major numbers, cash flow. First lien HELOC 489, 6.56% locked in rate in 2023. That's very attractive in this marketplace right now when the prime rate is 8%. Okay, we owe 82,800. Here are the client's goals. They wanna become a millionaire, they wanna travel the world, leave legacy for the kids. Two kids we have, a uh, husband and wife, that's who I'm dealing with and I'm, I'm in communication with the uh, husband, 58 years old. He wants to help kids pay off student loans. So when that time comes, he wants to help, you know, finance their student loans instead of them borrowing from the institutions, they can borrow from dad. And then maybe he can set up a, a repayment plan where kids pay him back and he's using the HELOC to finance that. Or maybe he just flats out pay it all together, right? One or the other. And then invest in more real estate. So this is not in any particular order, but these are just the goals that he laid out that he wants to accomplish. So with that being said, we're starting velocity banking we just got the first lien heloc or they've they've uh i'm sorry they've had it for a little while so they've been doing the concept they locked in the rate they're on a fixed rate option right now let's calculate 6.5 percent on eighty two thousand eight hundred. what's our borrowing cost let's figure out that number and let's figure out how much we can cut this rate now, if you're looking over here on the right side of the board, I already gave you the answer. After we're looking at one year of velocity banking, in one year, our net borrowing cost is going to be just under 3.25%, right? And our total cost is going to be 2,680.06 is our average roughly cost of borrowing in the first year of velocity banking. On this side, I'm going to break down the math, show you exactly how I get these numbers, how I get these estimates. These are not going to be exact. I'm overestimating, leaving room for error, okay? So here we go. The $82,000 uh, debt has produced a monthly payment of $540. So that's principal and interest, 540. If you times 82,800 and you times it by 6.56%, you should get this number, 5,431.68. Divide that by 365, our daily borrowing cost is $14.88. Here's the primary difference between this type of a HELOC and other HELOCs in the marketplace. That $14.88 at the end of one day with most other HELOCs, that $14.88 is gonna get charged to the balance, right? So when that person goes to make a payment in advance, they'll see part of that payment go towards interest, the rest towards principal. Some banks may give you the option, right? You may be given the option where you can have your payments go directly to principal. And if you have a HELOC like that, then your HELOC functions like this HELOC, right? Similar. Okay. Some may not give you that option. In this case, that $14.88 is going to be sitting off to the side. It's only going to be extracted on the due date. So it'll tally it up over the over that whole cycle, that statement cycle, and then you'll get charged what that total cost is. All right. So that's what's happening here. That's how we get our numbers. 82,800 times the rate, boom, then divide by 365, boom, 1488. Now, doing velocity banking, we dump our income in. So in this case, there's, there's a lot of automation here. They don't have to manually move their paycheck over. It automatically goes right into the line. So that means when they get paid, they don't have to remind themselves to do that. It's another feature and benefit of this particular product here is automation in Velocity Banking. They've automated bill pay. They've automated direct deposits via their income. They're automating expenses coming out. That's all automated. It's you're being extremely efficient with this type of a tool in regards to the velocity banking concepts. That's what makes this very attractive uh, to consider getting. So minus income, the balance goes down to $70,050.95, $70, right? So minus that income number, that's what you should get. The expenses, look what I wrote, $8,061.12. Why did I write that? Because I wrote that the expenses over here were actually $8,148.48, right? So 8,061,012 dollars is, the way I got that number, 540 is the monthly payment. If you were to divide this number by 12, you'll get this, 452.64. So they're actually paying an interest, if we do nothing, but just pay the monthly payment of 540, $452.64 would have gone to interest, only $87.36 went to principal. So what you have to understand is this 540 payment is in this number, 8,148.48. So that would mean that technically you would need to do 8,148 minus the 540. That's what's actually coming out of the HELOC to pay other expenses, other bills, 
right? So what I did here is say, okay, of that 540, we know majority of that is going to interest. I'm gonna minus the 8736 to factor in that that money stood in the line of credit. So technically only $8,061.12 went out, right? The rest, that interest, 452.64, which is already included in this number. So what I'm showing is income going in, expenses coming out, 8,061.12. So just minus $87.36. You should get that number at the end of one month in May 2023. Here's where the balance should end off around 78,112.07. What I do from here is I take this number, 78, the $70,000 number and the $82,000 number times it by 6.5%, get that number, divide by 365, you get this number. You're gonna get three separate numbers. Add those three numbers up together, divide by three, you're gonna get your average daily borrowing costs times that number by 30 days, you should get this number right here, $414.99. From there, we have cashback rewards. We're gonna be running bills through a credit card. Roughly 3,000 bucks is what I estimated, although he could probably do more than that. So off of a 2% cashback rewards amount, we're looking at about $60 per month, every single month that helps offset our borrowing costs, which means 60 less dollars came out of the HELOC. So I did not account for that, but I, I will continue to only account for the difference of interest each and every month, right? So here's what happens. If you did 452.64 minus 414.99, you're gonna get a savings, $37.65 of 540, 37.65 plus 87.36 went to principal. That's the only thing I'm factoring in over the next year. I'm not accounting for an additional $60 on average in cashback rewards, that, that did not leave the, the HELOC, right? Because the cashback rewards are gonna get applied to the credit card statement, which means when the credit card is due and it automatically comes out of the HELOC, it's $60 less coming out, which that affects your interest costs, makes it lower. So that's my little room for error there, little estimation. So these are overestimated costs. When it's all said and done, they could probably bring their borrowing costs, maybe even less than 3.25 but this is still a really good result. In 2023, our interest cost is 3.25 while everyone else is in near double digits what they're paying in interest. So this is extremely attractive and we're talking a very large line of credit at our disposal to either invest and it only costs us 3.25 or pay off debt and it only costs us 3.25, right? Over one year period. So that's the best way to understand your borrowing costs. So those are the elements, right? So the ending balance, 78,000 in the first month of Velocity Banking, we went from 452 down to 414, right? So then what I did the following month is I, I showed that 8,061.12 minus 3765, you should get this number, 8,023.47. Income stays the same, so minus income, here's what the balance goes down to, plus expenses, here's what it goes up to. Starting balance, lowest balance, ending balance. There's always gonna be those three numbers to help you determine what your estimated borrowing costs will be. So we end off around 73,801.48, look what happens. $391.93 from 414.99, that's a $23 and $6 difference in the month of June. And notice how the number is, you know, around the same. 2342 in July, 368. Balance goes down to 69. 444, 77. Look how I minused it. Expenses, 8041. So that's what I'm going to continue doing all throughout the year. And you're going to see how the interest cost continuously drops. So if we look at a 12 month period from May 2023 to April 2024, so we got 12 months, right? Because you have to count the month of May. That's why we have 12. So 12 whole months by April, our borrowing cost is 147.08. So in all, it went all the way from 452 down to 147. If you were to add these numbers that are in the parentheses, add them all up, you should get this number, $3,406. Your offset amount, the 720, that's money you get back each and every month, running bills through a credit card, minus 720, that helps offset your cost. You're technically still paying that number, but you got 720 back. So your net, was 2,680.06, which is a 3.25% borrowing cost. Not bad at all. 
This is doing velocity banking on the tool itself for one year. Okay, that's what just happened here. And you can see how the balance goes down. You can check my math, you can run these numbers, you can replace these numbers with your numbers, put your four major numbers right here, put your debt tool right there, put how much you owe times it by your rate, get a number, then divide by 365, see what your daily borrowing cost is, right? Then minus your income, see what the number goes down to times it by your rate, divide by 365, get another number, do it again, add expenses, see what your ending balance is times that by your interest rate, divide by 365, boom, you get your numbers. This takes you 15, 20 minutes, right? If you invest in yourself, you run your numbers, okay? You're not gonna disappoint yourself. You don't have to guess. You don't have to be in la la land, willy nilly, trying to figure things out. Run the numbers, take 60 minutes with you and your spouse, sit down, run the darn numbers, right? These videos are not little five minute clips. For you to get excited and motivated the whole point of these videos being 30 45 minutes almost an hour long is so that you could have me playing in the background and you sit with wife you sit with husband right you sit with your spouse you sit with the family run the numbers as i'm running the numbers on someone's case study right here you do it do it with me pause the video all right okay he said that okay boom he said that okay boom he said that put it all together and then you're gonna see where you're at 